She was a little sheepish, pun intended. It's been a minute. Um, I'm Haley. I am a knitter in Nashville, Tennessee. You can find me on all the social media platforms as Knit Weekend, also on Ravelry. And um, yeah, joining me today, you can maybe just see her little tail here, is sweet Georgia Brown. Um, this is Georgie. Uh, she is pretty talkative today, so you may be hearing from her a little bit during this episode. But um, this is really going to be more of a Rhinebeck weekend highlight um, than anything else. So just uh, a quick life update before we get started um, as a way of explanation for why I haven't been here, even though last time I said I was going to do better, but then I didn't. Um, I did mention in my last podcast episode that I had a family member who was ill. I didn't share more than that at the time because I wanted to protect her privacy. Uh, but now I guess I will share that the reason why I haven't been here um, actually is that my mother passed away um, and so it's been almost three, four weeks um, since then and I needed to wait to film a podcast until I could say that without bursting into tears for all of you all to see. Um, so a lot of folks have reached out and been very kind to ask where I've been or what's been going on and um, the support from the community has been much appreciated. So um yeah so that's that's what's been going on there which is why i haven't been present here um you know there are just moments in life that mark a before and after um and i think losing a parent is definitely one of those um anyhow i did though have this trip to rhinebeck um in new york planned and decided to carry on with it and I'm so glad that I did. It was such a wonderful distraction um, from everything going on um, as far as just dealing with estate matters and that sort of stuff. So um, that's really what this podcast episode is going to be about and if I get a little red in the face or you see me sweating, just know I am taking one for the team wearing wool today. Um, our air conditioner is off. In fact, maybe I should go turn it on um, because it is the end of October, but it is still 80 degrees and I didn't want to turn the fan on because then you'd have the noise. You're going to have enough construction noise. They are building two houses next door to me uh, and which is why I'm kind of in the other room filming today because the construction noise is just so loud in the living room. So if you hear knocking, it's not your door it's next door. They are getting siding on the houses today. So um, anyhow, uh, I think the structure of this podcast is going to be kind of along the lines of what I wore, where I went, who I met, and of course, what I bought, including um, some bucket list yarns along the way. Uh, yeah, so we can dive right in. Sorry, that banging is Georgie on the closet door. Uh, <laughs> it's just going to be one of those episodes. We're going to roll with it. Also, probably very little editing because uh, I have plans with my family tonight. And um, so this is just going to be put up on YouTube so that you can have it for your Sunday viewing pleasure. Excuse me. Okay, so let's start by... Um, well, actually, let me just start by telling you that I really was skeptical about all the hype surrounding Rhinebeck Weekend, and it was something that I never really thought I would do, uh, and I just kind of got a wild hair and decided, you know what, let's go, and uh, I am so glad that I did. I think it's totally worth all the hype. It's something that every knitter or fiber fan should experience. Uh, it is something all into itself and I just had the most amazing time. I went um, with my mother-in-law who is also a fiber fan. She 
has a background in textiles and over the years has done weaving and knitting um, and now she's kind of getting into the drop spindle. So um, it was a very fun weekend for both of us and um, yeah, so if you wait till the end of the video, you're going to see some video highlights, a couple minutes of video highlights and you'll see her in those videos wearing one of uh, my shawls that I'll talk about in a minute and you can also see some still photos on Instagram. Normally I would pop them in, you know, here in the corner, but like I said, not much editing time today because I want to get this video out. So you can see still photos of all the places that we went, people that we met um, over on Instagram in addition to the videos at the end of the episode. So uh, what I wore, start with this. I decided to put this on today because this is the sweater that I got the most questions about over the weekend and since posting my photos. Uh, this is my Poetry A Pullover by Sari Nordland. Um, the pullover is originally designed, I think, in KFO, Merino, and uh, Silk Mohair held together. I took a little bit of a different route on this one, and I knit it in Cory Worsted in this gorgeous rust color. Um, <laughs> You know, the, I'm going to be talking about my mother-in-law a lot this episode. Her name is Saki. She's fabulous. Um, really enjoy her. She's an artist. It's so it, she appreciates color and texture. And um, she actually selected this yarn for me. They made a trip to Amsterdam to visit some family members. And I sent her to Stephen and Penelope uh, to bring me home a souvenir. Did I know that she was going to bring me home such an amazing uh gift of a sweater's quantity of Cory Worsted. No, I did not. Um, but she chose this rest color, she said for me, because uh, it matched my hair and my eyes. And um, I hear that a lot uh, with this kind of color tone. So this is what I chose to wear on the actual Saturday of the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Uh, it's just probably the most fall sweater that I own, I think. And um, this kind of, I know this is, is poetry, I think is um, meant to be music inspired, but to me, I also could just totally see a leaf motif in this. Um, so with this yarn, it just doesn't get more fall than this. And also it gave me the opportunity slash right to accost uh, Amy from Libyan MA and um, ask her for a photo, uh, which you can also check out on Instagram. I was totally fangirling on that one. I think you can tell in my face. Um, so the only thing that I will say about this is I did knit this actually on a pretty loose gauge for this yarn, I think. And I don't all, I think I actually have fairly good Ravelry notes on this one, so you can check it out. Um, but because it is on a loose gauge and this yarn is so soft, it does have a lot of pilling. You can probably see that halo and um, believe it or not, I actually shaved this before I wore it up there. So this is just a couple days of wear um, on the yarn, but I do love this sweater. It is fantastic um, and it did go a size up so that it would have a little bit more of a relaxed fit. Um, and I'm really glad that I did because it uh, allows for some layering. So I was able to wear this with a long sleeve shirt underneath, um, when I was chilly because Nashville girl in New York in the fall, um, get a little chilly sometimes. So that's, uh, this was my sweater that I wore to the Saturday of New York sheep and wool and lots of questions about that one. Um, I also packed along with me uh, my favorite sweater to wear, and um, and I I should back up. I didn't knit anything specifically for Rhinebeck this year. One, as I've shared, I had a lot going on personally, and it just didn't seem feasible. Um, but two, it's my first time, so nobody there has seen my knits before. And um, I just decided why not wear some of my favorites uh, instead of knitting something new and took some pressure off of myself, which I'm really glad I took that route. Um, but so the other sweater that I took and wore um, is my Koyame 
And I talked about this one in one of my earlier episodes. This is a lovely pattern by Joanna Ang. It has a gorgeous cable motif on the sleeve. Let me see if I can show it to you. Yeah, I love that cable motif. It wears so much like a sweatshirt. It is a um, saddle shoulder construction, really fun to knit. I highly recommend this pattern. She's designed it actually, I believe, in unspun yarn and Newtoden, but I've knit this in a farm yarn uh, from a local farm here outside of Nashville in um, a two-ply Icelandic, I believe it is a woolen spun yarn. So that was kind of a fun yarn substitution choice. And I'm glad I um, made that choice because it just has made the most amazing fabric and showcased the yarn and the texture of the yarn exactly how I would have wanted it to. So I decided to take this one with me being that it also layers very nicely. I can wear a long sleeve shirt under it and it's just probably the most comfortable, easy wearing sweater that I own. Uh, yeah, so those are the sweaters that I took. I did take a vest, um, which I did not end up wearing, and that is simply because it was a bit chillier um, than I expected uh, while we were up there, and so I definitely needed the long sleeves on my sweaters, and a vest just would not have cut it. But I also took a couple scarves or shawls. Let me grab those from the wall. Um, I'm wearing sweatpants. I'm not going to edit. Don't judge me. Okay, so the two scarves that I took you have seen one of these and I'll show you that one first. Uh, I took this lovely Lunai shawl, which was a recent finished object. This was my um, entry for the, oh God, I can never remember the hashtag, ladies, I'm so sorry. Uh, the, the caravan to Rhinebeck, caravan, Hmm, Caravan to Rhinebeck, I think, um, with Casey and Becky uh, Young Fulton Knits and a hand knit letter. So this one was a very long term whip and I was determined to finish it before Rhinebeck. I told you in the last episode that I was trying to decide if I was going to do the tassels or not. I've done the tassels. Tassels have been completed and I think it actually looks really fantastic. So um, really proud of this shawl, but I didn't get to wear it. Uh, my mother-in-law actually wore it pretty well the whole weekend. I offered it to her for the first event on Friday. She was a little sheepish, pun intended, about wearing it because she was worried she would ruin it. And I was like, it's, it's a knit. It's not going to ruin from you wearing it. Um, but she, decided after attending the Friday event when she felt left out, being the only person without a hand knit on, um, that she did want to wear it the rest of the weekend. And frankly, I loved how she styled it. I would not have thought to fold it in the manner in which she did. Should I show you? Um, so how she styled it was, it's actually a pretty wide shawl. This is the back side. It's actually a pretty wide shawl, um, but she folded it down kind of like this to where you just had just the basic uh, mosaic um, band there. And then, hold on. It's never easy to style on camera. And then that made it a much shallower shawl. She took it and um, just wrapped it something like this. And so she had this lovely piece hanging down in the front with all the tassels and then the widest part of the, of the mosaic and the widest part of the shawl was thrown over her shoulder. And um, I just really loved how she styled that. So I was glad that I let her wear it because now I have a new way to wear a shawl that would have never occurred to me otherwise. Um, okay, too hot for this, taking it off. So you have seen this one before. Um, it got lots of love, just not by me, over the weekend. But the one that you have not seen that I will give you some more details on is 
yet another vertices unite uh, this is my second vertices unite my first one is here am i pointing in the right direction there on the wall um i knit the, that up in the early spring and it has a bright green and a, and a peach color in it very cherry blossom and um you know kind of spring moment i wore it pretty much the whole trip when we were in norway um and copenhagen so when i had decided that i was going to go to rhinebeck i thought you know what I need another Vertices Unite to travel with, and um, so I cast one on. But this time I decided that I was going to knit it in more of a fall hue um, to go with all of my fall and winter knits. It is still knit <laughs> in my favorite shawl yarn, um, which is Alpaca 2 from East Air. Um, little bit of linen quill in here on these stripes because I just had like a small amount to use up. And um, so I just wanted to kind of get that out of the stash and use that. Um, I do have the colors somewhere. If you're interested, let me see what colors we've knit this in. Um, okay, so one of the colors here, this one is gingerbread. So that's gingerbread. Just gonna bear with me because this is real time. All right, here, and this one I actually also used in the Lunai shawl. Um, this is a deep marine blue. Those two I had in stash along with this, which is just a walnut natural color. And then I did have to buy a couple extra. Let me wait for that light to come back. Is the light gonna come back? Sorry, it is turning into a bit of a cloudy day out there. So we may just have to kind of roll with the funky lighting and just see where we end up. Um, Okay, so I did have to buy a couple more colors as one does to actually get the project made. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. I just upped the exposure a bit. Hopefully it's not too blown out. Um, so the way that I went about choosing these colors and I was going to select them is I looked at some of the other knits that I had planned for the fall and winter and decided to choose colors based on those yarns. Um, so this color you will see in more toward the end of the episode in one of my uh, larger whips, um, but this is a mulberry. Getting it. And then also navy. So those are the colors that I chose for my fall rendition of the Vertices Unite. I thought it was a pattern that like pretty well everybody knew and I really didn't think that anybody was going to be that excited to see it um, in person, but I got a lot of compliments on it. I think the color selections turned out really nicely and this one turned out a bit stripier than I really wanted it to, more contrast than I expected, but I just kind of ran with it. And um, I knit this in a week. I had a trip down to the Gulf Coast, and so I, this was the only project that I took with me. Very much a potato chip, one more row kind of knit, and um, not very difficult at all. So, love the small version, um, and wore this myself pretty much all weekend because it kind of works with both of the sweaters that I took with me. Uh, oh, in the color selection, and this is something that, you know, I would do again next time I'm doing um, this type of um, modular knit where you're working in different colors. I kind of had a hard time choosing what direction to go with the colors. So I ended up knitting myself a little color swatch that I can just add on to. So I started in this 
section and then added this section and added this section so that I could make a decision about the colors. Um, and I thought that worked out really well, helped me to keep from frogging um, when I wasn't really sure what direction to head next. So pretty, pretty pleased with uh, that little technique. I would use that again. Okay, so that covers what I wore. And now we can talk about where we went. Um, gosh, all over the place. If you've not been to the Hudson River Valley area before, which I had not, this was my first time visiting, um, there are just several small quaint towns all along the river. It was just the most special area, especially to visit in fall. Um, so we started out day one in, um, which is Friday for us. We arrived Thursday late night um, and we started out day one on Friday in Catskill. Um, our plans included the now infamous Woolen Folk. I've really had to think about how I was going to talk about this event uh, because I'm sure you have heard by now that it was not a good event for many people for many different reasons. And I can totally understand why people are hurt, people are feeling mistreated, people are feeling left out, they're feeling excluded, and 100%. Um, but, and all of that is absolutely true. But what I just wanna share with you are some of the highlight moments rather than going into a lot of that because really who you need to hear from on that are the vendors and are the people who were excluded based on accessibility issues. Um, you can find a lot of those videos, very heartfelt posts and other moments um, on Instagram and on YouTube. And I would encourage you to listen to those. Um, I will be shocked if that event happens again next year. I just don't, I mean, as an attendee, I'm going to follow the vendors because I chose to go to Woolen Folk based on the fact that so many vendors that I wanted to see would be there. Um, sadly, the ones that I really wanted to see, I didn't get to see because of just the state of the event. Um, but I did uh, come across some new to me vendors um, yarn companies that I am excited to share with you about. So that's really gonna be my focus. Um, but they had kind of one of the weird things that happened with the wool and folk um, experience happened before the event. There was a last minute change of venue announced and they didn't email the attendees. Um, it was just announced on Instagram. So you just, if you weren't following them on Instagram, I don't know how you would have heard about it. But one of the things that they mentioned with the change of venue was that parking was going to be super limited. And the option if you weren't able to find parking in the downtown area was to take a shuttle from Walmart, which was about 30 minutes away. We just decided we weren't going to do that. The event started at noon. We got into Catskill around 8.39 and just kind of wandered around. Stumbled upon a store called Madex Hudson. Um, you can find them on Instagram. I'm sure they have a website as well. They actually have two locations, one in Catskill, one in Hudson. Uh, their clothing is uh, made in, handmade in their mill in the building where we were. And they had a lovely trunk show for Nor'easter yarns while we were there. So you'll see that video at the end of the episode. Um, we had so much fun chatting with Cecilia, who is the creator behind Nor'easter yarns. She is from Sweden and she was there spinning um, and just a lovely visit and lovely yarns. Um, and I did, of course, pick up a skein. I'll go through all the skeins with you later on in the episode, um, kind of lumped together so that you can take notes on what you might be interested in trying. Um, and then they also had a little like kind of dram bar lunch counter in the store. And we noticed that they said they were gonna have a lunch service at noon, um, which was going to be a bento box lunch. So 
Uh, Saki and I decided rather than going and waiting in line in the rain with all the masses, we were just going to go have a nice, lovely lunch um, at the lunch counter in Maydex Hudson. And we were so glad that we did because it really just set the tone for our day and made the day not feel like a total kind of disaster area. Um, so after our lovely lunch, then we went down to Wool and Folk. And I, um, this was my maybe second or third fiber like festival event, a large scale fiber festival event. And I, there were just people absolutely everywhere. It was rainy. It was a mess. Um, we all, it started, I started to say hi. I saw um, Mia from Knit and Grace and I started to say hi to her and the skies opened up and the rain came down and we all just went running into the tents um, to try to get out of the rain. So, so yeah, so it was a, it was a little bit of a crazy day. And, um, but what was amazing about that event was that it was small enough that I could find people. I was sitting there shopping for some yarn, which I did buy and I will show you in a minute, um, that I picked out for a shawl that I plan for next year. Um, and I heard somebody say, oh, there's Haley. I was like, well, I don't know anybody here other than my mother-in-law, so who's saying my name? And I turned around and it was Mia um, and her smile was just so big and it was great. And then I looked to her right and it was Becky from A Hand Knit Letter and I looked to her left and it was Casey from Young Folk Knits and I almost fell over. It was so surreal to see these people. Uh, me and I have chatted quite a bit uh, for months and months. And I've chatted a little with uh, Becky and Casey over time as well. But I do watch their podcasts, all three of them. And so it was just surreal to see these people who I'm used to seeing in my living room standing in front of me. I kind of wanted to just poke them to see if they were real. I didn't, but I wanted to. Um, and what was even more fun was that we all matched. So go over to my Instagram. I think on my Rhinebeck Roundup part one, you will see a photo of the four of us together. Becky had on her penguino and um, I had on my fall vertices unite, which very much uh, this color was one of the featured colors in her penguino. And then ironically, Casey and Mia both also had on vertices unite. So, um, you know, granted we are all covered up in our raincoats, um, but I think that you can tell that we kind of all dressed in the same uh, motif and mode, which was really fun to see them there. When I saw um, <laughs> Rebecca from the Crea Bea walk by and Amy Palco, I was like, I am not cool enough to speak to them. And um, then Jackie Rose um, was there at the Lamb and Kid booth, also Le Garçon. So all these podcasters who you're used to seeing and um, feel like you know, even though you don't, um, they were all there. And it was just the craziest experience to see all of those people in one location. Just very cool. So. Um, for me, that was really the highlight of the Wool and Folk Day. It was small enough that I was able to see all of those people, at least walking by, if not give them a hug. Um, yeah, so the other highlight of Wool and Folk was finding some smaller yarn companies that I was not familiar with, maybe had heard of, but not really familiar with, excuse me. And being able to um, see their yarn. So I will kind of, uh, do I wanna save that for now? I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that. We're gonna go through all the yarn at the end. Um, so Saturday, we just did um, New York Sheep and Wool on one day and that was Saturday. Now, if I were going to do this again, and I hope to do this again, I would definitely do a two day um, event. And that way you can see more of the kind of farm showcases and um, some of the judging contests and also have time to meet up on the hill, which I did not do. We shopped 9.30 to 3.30 all day long um, in all the stalls except one. So now I have a reason that I have to go back because in that stall was one of my bucket list yarns, Green Mountain Spinnery. 
and I missed it. So next trip, Green Mountain Spinnery, sweater quantity for sure. Um, but New York sheep and wool was just incredible to see the sheep. And um, we watched a mohair judging contest. You will see kind of the first, second, and third place winners um, at the end of the episode. Uh, all of the fibers came across this lovely hand spun um, fiber company out of Michigan. Um, I'll share the name with you when I pull the yarn out in a minute. And um, they were just wonderful, lovely couple and actually had been to my husband's grandparents' restaurant that they used to own um, in days gone by. So it was just a really lovely experience. Um, I, you may have heard about The Hill. It being my first time at Rhinebeck, um, I did not make arrangements to meet up on The Hill with anybody. I definitely will next time because I felt a little like I had missed out on that, um, but, yeah, so the Hill is a gathering place where everybody goes to have their photos made if they're wearing their matching sweaters or just really to find people because it was nearly impossible to find anybody. In fact, I did not see, I only saw, I think, one person that I recognized or knew the whole day, and that was uh, Madison Monti. She also has a podcast here she um on youtube she was there at the fleece table at the fleece sale with her lovely mother and sister and we had quite a nice chat it was fun um i was that nerdy person who walked up and said hi i'm sorry to bother you but are you madison i watch your podcast and um they knew who i was too so i felt a little less awkward um in that moment but um yeah, so it was just a wild day. The rain did clear toward the end of the day. And um, if you go over to um, my Instagram, you'll see some lovely fall uh, colors in those photos. Obviously, one of the uh, major reasons for the trip, frankly, is to <laughs> Uh, add to one's yarn stash, um, which I definitely did. So I'm going to tell you now about some of the yarns um, that I found um, to add to my stash and um, some of them I hope to be casting on really soon. Okay, so let's start with what I found Friday at Will and Folk. Um, this is a gorgeous yarn from Lavender Loon. Can you see that texture? Um, it is, sorry for the beeping, there's construction equipment going outside. This is um, milled at Get Bent's Farm in Minnesota. And um, this is a Rambouillet, Corydale, and Surrey Alpaca uh, yarn. It is a sport weight yarn. And I think it's gonna make just a gorgeous, maybe spring, fall transitional. She had this dyed in several colors. Um, which I'm sure she probably has it up on her, hopefully she has it up on her website by now. Um, but I went with the natural uh, color base. So this this is just going to make a gorgeous, gorgeous top. Um, oh, this is the Nor'easter Yarns, uh, yarn that I purchased at the trunk show. This is also Upper Midwestern yarn. This is BFL. 100% um, BFL grown in Michigan and milled there as well at Zellinger in the colorway turmeric. Uh, Cecilia had a gorgeous sample in striped sweater of just all, or sorry, gorgeous sweater sample in stripes of all of her fall colorways in this uh, DK weight BFL. And um, she had some reds and like a brownie olive color, uh, just absolutely beautiful. And then also um, on Will and Folk Day, I found this, I'm gonna mispronounce this. This is Distilling Fiber. Look at that. Uh, it's so pretty. Um, this is a fingering base. This is for a uh, shawl that I plan to knit um, next year that I've picked this out. And I loved this because it is like a slight marl. But I think it's just um, marled due to the color of the yarn that is dyed. Um, so this is 80% Romney and um, 20, 
an 80% Romney uh, BFL mix and 20% Merino. Um, but this is just absolutely gorgeous. And then I have never knit a Surrey alpaca sweater before. So I found this beautiful Surrey alpaca in a tonal um, from Artfilt, it's a Canadian yarn company. She does uh, online shipping. I know this because I don't know how, but I ended up only with um, about half a sweater's quantity of this. And so I did order the remaining sweater's quantity. I'm not sure where my brain went when I was calculating the yardage, um, but it didn't go correct. So anyway, so this is just a gorgeous, this is her dream base. Um, which is actually a DK weight. So anything that you are holding two strands of mohair together, probably you can substitute one strand of this, which I'm excited for. Um, on to the um, Rhinebeck purchases. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is, this is one of my bucket list yarns um, that I have been wanting to try forever. This is Sawkill Farm. Even their label is just gorgeous. Um, I love this color. Um, it's like a coppery color. This is their two-ply worsted yarn. This is 50% um, Sawkill Farm wool from their farm, and then 50% domestic merino. And it says that their wool is raised in Red Hook, New York, and spun in Putney, Vermont. So if it's spun in Vermont, would that maybe be at Green Mountain Spinnery? I don't know. I should look on their website and see. This color is squash peach, squashed peach heathered. Um, and I just absolutely, this is upside down now, so you can see the prettier part of the skein. I just fell in love with this heathered look. I'm such a sucker for heathered yarn. Um, it just has such depth to it that I think is amazing. Okay, next up um, from Rhinebeck Saturday, New York Sheep and Wool purchase. My husband did request a sweater and he wanted a kind of medium gray color. So I found this gorgeous um, next, to, next to Skin Soft Coopworth yarn. Um, and that's the, that's the breed and it's from Mountain View Coopworths. Sorry, the labels are all kind of crushed because I had to cram it all in my suitcase. So this is an Aran weight, um, they call it worsted, but it's 185 yards to 100 grams. So I'm gonna call it Aran. Aran weight Coopworth, 100% Coopworth wool and a three ply worsted. Um, it is so soft. I think this is just gonna make a lovely, lovely sweater for him. And my final purchase um, is this very special, this is my first um, hand spun yarn, but if you're not going to get hand spun yarn at Rhinebeck, uh, when are you ever going to purchase it? Um, unless you spin it yourself, which I don't yet. This is a gorgeous hand spun. I love how you've got one strain that carries throughout that is like a light brown um, kind of chestnut tone. And then the other ply has purples, greens, yellows, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so this is about 185 yards per 100 grams. So I'm going to also say that this is an Aaron, or did I calculate it at 155? I don't know, this is Aran or bulky weight. So I have no idea what I'm going to knit with this. This is the one thing that I bought that I don't have anything envisioned for, but it's so special um, that I just decided that it could hang out um, in my stash for a while. Oh, and it was spun by Deb Klein at Maple Row Stock Farm. Maple Row Stock Farm. I looked for them online, but I couldn't find a website. They're out of Sherwood, Michigan. Um, so I don't believe that they are online. They have a, maybe they have a bit of an old school operation, which I love. Um, so anyway, that, those are the, uh, Rhinebeck purchases. I did manage to get it all home safely, which is wonderful. Um, and now I want to kind of, oh, I forgot to tell you about Sunday. 
Sunday, we went to Saugerties, which is another town. There is a wonderful yarn shop there called The Perfect Blend um, Yarn and Tea Shop, actually. And my husband visited there when he was in New York earlier um, in the summer months. I sent him with a shopping list, which was apparently pretty memorable to the people who work there uh, because they did remember him and asked me where my uh, Jill Draper sweater is. So the yarn that he picked up, I showed you this in the last episode because this project was a whip. Oh no, I've just undone this game. Um, so the yarn that he picked up was this gorgeous Jill Draper makes stuff um, Kingston. It is actually, a, it looks very aubergine. It's a royal blue base with red and yellow flecks on it. Um, so he picked that up for me and I knew that I had to knit a really special project. I had hoped to take it with me, but what I chose just wasn't going to be right for the weekend temperature wise. Um, oops. So I do have the finished object here for you. So I guess this is the finished object portion of the podcast. Um, so this is my Gloam cardigan by Caitlin Hunter. Uh, you can see it has a lovely pearl bump motif on it. And I really just wanted something that was going to speak to the earthiness of the Jill Draper Make Stuff yarn. I do not remember what needle size I knit this on. I believe that it was a four and I took very poor notes. Life was chaotic at the time that I was knitting it. This is a seamed garment. So this is my first like full on seamed piece. So the, the body, the front panel, the back panel is knit, then the front panels. You do knit the sleeves in the round. Um, I knit this a little shorter um, because I wanted a cropped version. I don't know that I will have an opportunity to take a photo um, before I post this video of the finished object, but we'll see. Um, so that is um, where the Jill Draper Make Stuff yarn landed. And maybe next year it'll be a little warmer on Rhinebeck weekend and I'll be able to wear it. Um, so that I can return the yarn to its rightful place in the country. Um, Jill Draper is based out of Kingston, New York in the Hudson River Valley area. So pretty fitting um, that this sweater, this finished object, goes in this episode. Um, yeah. Let's see. I think now I will just move on quickly to whips because I do need to kind of get on with the day, but I did want to kind of give you a highlight of what's coming next. Um, we're getting into, um, even though it's the end of October and we should be a month into fall, um, here we're still very warm. And so I'm still working on my fall knits and um, a couple highlights of what you can expect next um, episode. And I'll talk more about these in that episode. Uh, the first is the Moby slipover. I think this could be a finished object by next time. What do you think? Do you think so? Um, this is knit in Tenda, so uh, Hillesvog Tenda. So I'm finally getting into that yarn that I picked up um, in Norway. And I've got the neck and the armholes done. So now it's just on to the body. It should just be a few more pattern repeats and then this guy will be done. So I will give you more um, details on my experience of knitting the Moby Slipover um, next time. It is a petite knit pattern if you want to check it out in the meantime. And because I'm nearly done with that, I have started swatching for my next big sweater project. And that swatch is here. Do you, can you guess? I feel like I'm not going to tell you what this is. I'll tell you the yarns, but I'm not going to tell you the pattern. And we'll save that as a surprise. Hopefully it'll be cast on for next time. So this is my swatch. And um, there is another scarf here, there, from a previous episode that this um, yarn selection is inspired by. I've kind of just been waiting um, for an opportunity to, to use a couple of these yarns together. For me, fall and winter is all about texture, um, whether that be using different yarns or the texture in the pattern with pearls and cables and that sort of thing. Um, and so because of that, I've decided to use um, two different, entirely different textures and types of yarns in this pattern. I think it'll work out really nicely. So let me show you those yarns. Again, into my Norway yarn haul. Um, we're doing Tenda, 
um, from Hills by and also East Air in the um, Eco Soft. And this is one of my favorite yarns that I have ever knit with. It is just delicious. Um, so the two of those together in this really, it looks better if you don't have the barcode out front. Two of those together in this really textural swatch. And I think it's gonna make a really lovely pullover. Um, so that's all about Rhinebeck the whole weekend. Um, what a wonderful experience um, for me personally, minus the debacle that was the overcrowding, rainy, soupy mess that was Woolen Folk. Loved the people, the event, to put it mildly, had a lot to be desired. Um, but anyway, like I said, go online and look at what some of the vendors and some of the, um, you know, people who struggle to get into the event due to their accessibility needs and, and hear what they have to say because I think they're the ones who really truly are owed an apology by the organizer, a more meaningful apology. So that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm not going to get on my soapbox about that. I um, look forward to sharing with you, hopefully not too long from now. Um, I think I would like to get another video out for you in just a couple weeks since I didn't really get to talk about whips on this one. Um, but for now, I'm just say thanks for hanging out and I'll see you next time.